So let's talk about the experiment itself. First of all, I'm going to go through the whole process and then we'll get more specific. So step one, take about 0 0.1, 0 0.25 grams of powdered antacid tablet to a conical flask. So this powdered antacid tablet I got by crushing up a commercial tablet in a mortar and pestle. And we add to that 25.0, so we're using a pipette, so we're trying to be as precise as possible, 25.0 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl. Now, this is going to be about 0.1 molar HCl, but of course we need to know the moles of HCl. We know the volume precisely, so you need to record the exact molarity of this HCl solution for you. We then swirl that around. Now, remember what this is doing is this is much more than we need to neutralize all of the base that's in the antacid. This is the number of students that's more than we need to take care of the number of umbrellas. We then heat the solution to a boil, maintain the heat for about a minute, I put this in red because that's a post-lab question associated. Add five drops of an indicator. I'm going to give you two experiments one where I use universal indicator to indicate something about the experiment, another one where I just use phenol phthalene, which is the normal indicator to use. We then rinse a clean burette with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Um, again, we need to know exactly how many moles of sodium hydroxide we've got, so do record the exact molarity of the NaOH. It'll be about 0.1 molar NaOH. Now we're going to do the titration, and that titration will take us to the endpoint, which will be determined, indicated by the color change of the indicator needed to remain for at least 20 seconds. And of course, once we know the volume of the NaOH needed to um, get to the endpoint, we know the moles of NaOH needed to get to the endpoint. That will be the same as the moles of acid left over after it has neutralized all of the antacid base. So if we go for the numbers on the first slide, we have 14 bases inside this antacid. We took 20 students. We then determined that we had six students left over. I want you to calculate the grams of the base, which is calcium carbonate, per gram of the antacid tablet. You know the gram of the antacid tablet from step number one. The way you get the grams of the base is you get the moles of the base. The way you get the moles of the base is by going through the whole student umbrella process here. And of course, I'm going to give you several sets of data for each of two antacids. So doing the experiment for antacid A, so add between 0 0.1 and 0.25 grams of powdered antacid to a conical flask. There I am weighing it out. You can see the antacid little weighing tray using our nice precise analytical balance, getting us to four decimal places. So this first trial, we got 0.1396 of the powdered antacid. And remember, that's 0.1396 grams that is the base as well as the filler. Stick it in a conical flask, you can see it at the bottom there. So using a pipette, add in the 25 mils of 0.1 molar HCl into the flask and swell the mixture. Now, I'm going to add universal indicator at the start here because I want to emphasize to you the effect of the buffering. So here we start off after one milliliter. I hope you would agree it's a blue solution because, of course, it's basic. We've got lots of the antacid and we've hardly added any of the acid at all. So nicely blue. Now, then I add in more of my HCl. And when I've added 10 mils of the HCl, now the solution is yellow. Now, of course, what this tells you is that this is acidic. It's the, the earliest of the acidic ones. So if you think about the titrations that you have done with acids and bases, what we expect is that as soon as it starts going acid, we add just a little bit more acid and it gets really acid and it goes to red. However, this is a buffer solution. It's inert to pH change. So when I add yet another 10 mils of the acid, so now I've added 20 mils of the acid, it's only gone from yellow to orange. In other words, buffer solution relatively inert to added acid. We've added quite a lot of the acid here, but we've only got a teensy little change, relatively speaking, in the pH. And it's only as I start getting towards the full 25 milliliters that I get the full red acidity. OK, so this is illustrating to you the problem with doing that titration. If we were just to do it straight on, is that we spend a lot of time, a lot of added acid without much change to the pH. 
So next step, I'm not going to show you heating the solution to a boil because that would be really boring. I am going to show you, however, that, of course, we've already added some indicator, some universal indicator into our acidic solution. And we've got a pink beaker now. But now I'm also going to add a bit more universal indicator to my stock sodium hydroxide solution to make it easier to see in the burette. And then also um, so I could follow things along a little bit better. Now, the next thing is rinse a clean burette with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And of course, we're going to fill it up with sodium hydroxide. Now, if we were doing it in the lab, I would emphasize to you the way to fill a burette. Now, I can't show you face to face so I'm going to show you a little picture okay here's me that's my eye there is the burette behind me with the funnel going into it now first of all funnel going in to help you add the solution without splashing it around all over the place but notice how the funnel is below my eye level okay that's extremely important you'll often see labs in which students have got a burette with the funnel in it up nice and high because the burette is rather long and they're reaching up to pour things in the funnel and if it splashes over and it will get nicely into their eyes okay so always have the burette and the funnel that you're using to fill it below eye level and excuse the ridiculous amounts of lockdown hair there anyway so i do that and here i've got my solution and you can see the purple showing you a little bit easier to see the meniscus right at the zero mark so i've got a fill burette starting off with having added zero milliliters so now we'll go ahead and actually do the titration. My endpoint will be where the color changes. So we started off with a red solution. Here is the bluish purple solution that it changed to eventually rather swiftly. So it was red, 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 and then over a matter of a couple of drops, went through the whole yellow green and now ended up with the bluey violet solution. And to get that, I had added this much arm on my burette reading. So I started at zero. Here you can see the meniscus nicely at 7.2. So that's our data for the first run of antacid A.